Okay, so we have two different types of Greek pottery here. We have the red figure on black and then the black figure on red. This was, uh, the black figure was how the Greek potters were traditionally making the pottery. The pottery was red terracotta clay and they would cover it with a black ongobe. And the ongobe is basically a slip, which is a watery clay that had been stained. Then they carved out the excess and it left the figure black. Uh, they weren't real happy with that because their bodies, their figures weren't black, they were more brown. So they went to a reverse where they carved everything away to reveal the clay below it so it ended up being a red figure and that became the desirable um, style. So basically what all potters do, particularly the Greek potters, they would take the watery clay which is a slip, they would set, let the clay settle and the top third is called a terra sigillata. The terra sigillata is the finest clay. Basically, they would take something like this. We have a black stain here. We would add it to the slip or the terra sigillata to get something like this. And basically what you would do is you would put it on the terracotta pottery. We don't have terracotta pottery here. We have white. So basically they cover it and then we would let it dry. We would scratch it through, called scraffito. But this is exactly what the Greeks were doing with their pottery, the red and black ware. Once this is finished, the, uh, the potters would put it in the kiln where it's fired up to 2,380 degrees. And usually, uh, no glazes were used. The work was basically burnished, which means you would take a hard substance like your fingernail and rub it really, really hard and that would cause the molecules to push together and reflect the light back at you. So usually the Greek and Roman pottery didn't have any glazes.